okay, you enjoyed that one, didn't you? I do apologise to Anthony, but he seemed to have inhaled my mask. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, I'm just going to have to go, because otherwise I'll be a very big distraction. But I'm okay. Now, under your chairs, um, you will have found a triangle with two holes in it and a head. Please try and find those, because we're going to be needing them towards the end of our message. If you haven't got one, please raise your hand and Chris, my able assistant, will go and hand you one from various other um, chairs. And a few weeks ago, I spoke to you on Climate Sunday about how we are going to be good stewards of the resources that God gives us. Can you remember that Climate Sunday all those weeks ago? And we looked at how we are encouraging to be sustainable to appreciate our planet and to be less wasteful. And that we as an eco-congregation are going to strive to be examples of that in our community. Now, Psalm 148 gives us an opportunity to take a fresh look at our planet and God's amazing creation. So we're going to look at it from above, from below and within. To build upon those thoughts as you look at your harvest of fresh this year. So from above, which is adoration. Psalm 148 verses 1 to 6 begins with a call for everything in the heights, with a bird's eye view perspective to praise the Lord. And our world is amazing, isn't it? And we have to admit to ourselves that we are quite small in comparison to the vastness and variety. We're not able to see the whole world in one go, are we? Because we're that small, we can't see the whole world in one go. We probably take little snapshots, we piece together a jigsaw in our mind. And I'm probably one of the rare examples now of, people, of someone who has never gone abroad. I've been on a plane for the first time a few weeks ago, but I've never been abroad. But I've looked at pictures of the world, landmarks, gorgeous scenery, Beaches, the food, the cultures that are around the world, art and exploration. And I always think, mm, maybe one day, maybe one day. But my view has been from the very top of Scotland, right to the very bottom of England, and I've been a bit sideways in between. And I'm just amazed in that small section of our giant world how diverse our country is. The difference from looking out my window here and seeing the sea and the gorgeous scenery of West Niles to looking out my window at college and seeing dry cleaners. <laughs> it's very different, isn't it? The difference in weather, in temperature and the scenery. But my God, my Father who is in the heavens sees the whole world. He doesn't just see me. He doesn't just see my viewpoint, what I've seen. He sees everything. Everything that is on this planet. And throughout the Bible, God is pictured, isn't he, as the highest above. The highest over the earth. God is pictured to see everything. He is supreme above all things. And in this reading, we are lifted up to see things from God's perspective. From above. Everything giving praise. Everything we cannot comprehend or see. Adoring the Father. So looking at Earth from above has left a powerful and lasting impression on astronauts who have seen this view for real. So here's an example. Jim Lovell, who flew with the Apollo missions 8 and 13, said, It is really hard to appreciate the Earth when you're down right upon it because it is so huge. However, from a position of 240,000 miles away, we gain an idea of how insignificant we are and how fragile we are. And we have seen in our media, haven't we, how fragile our world has become, from the food shortages to the environmental changes, to name a few. And maybe many of these issues have come out because we have been looking at the smaller image rather than adoring the wider, outstretched gloriousness of God's full creation. When we start from above, we cannot help but be filled with praise and adoration. So this harvest time, let us come and adore him. Adore our almighty Father and try to see the world from his perspective today. So from below, which is all, 
In contrast, the next section of this psalm, verses 7 to 12, the psalmist calls the earth, or all that is below, to praise the Lord. We heard it in the psalm right at the beginning, didn't we? From creatures, from sea creatures, to mountains, to people of all ages and backgrounds. The Lord created us all, and we owe him the praise. Now, the definition of being in awe is this. I got this off the internet, so it was a quick Google search, so there probably is other definitions, but this is the one I found. To have an overwhelming amount of respect or admiration for someone or something, sometimes to the point of feeling nervous or fearful around them or it. That's the definition of what awe is. And small children often give us a child's eye view of what the world is being seen from below in God's creation. So when was the last time we looked at creation through the eyes of a child and rediscovered the awe and wonder of it all? Are you in awe today at God? Are you in awe of his creation and the beautiful blessings he gives you? The bit of that definition interests me is the bit about feeling nervous or fearful around them. Have you ever thought about that? In Psalm 148, this middle section shows creation giving praise to God, the mountains and hills, animals and nations praising God for his glorious provision. And we talk about God sometimes like he's apart from us, like we haven't learned over the years that he is with us. So shouldn't there be a healthy fear of God because he is with us and he sees all? We should be fearful to repent when we have done wrong. We should be fearful because God is awesome. God is a loving God, but as part of this, we should live in awe. And as our example explains, children have a different view of the world. And sometimes the children are not fearful of their parents if they have done wrong. That doesn't mean that the parents love them any less. But that the child may appreciate the supremacy of their parents for their well-being. I pray that we may be inspired to be more childlike, to discover again in awe and wonder at God's world around us, to be inspired to care more for his beautiful planet that he has placed us on. And as we look from below, look at the vastness of creation, appreciating the creator. And finally, from within, action. The final viewpoint we are considering is from within. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus unites heaven and earth. He is from above, yet he is with us below. Through Jesus, we gain this third perspective, from within. The climax of this psalm in verse 14, where God shows he loves and cares for his creation. He has a special place for his people, you and me and our fellow humanity. As part of God's creation, we are loved by him. And if our adoration is in place from looking above, if our awe is engaged and connected, looking from below, then from within creation, we should be called to action, to care for creation and for all humanity. From within, we are called to action. And faith into action has been the tagline of the army for many years. As we consider afresh today our praise to God, as part of this from within and wanting to act, we need to be thankful, don't we, for the blessings and aim to bring people into this saving knowledge of Christ. And verse 13 sums this up. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendour is above the earth and the heavens. This harvest time is more than just bringing in some tears from the cupboard. This harvest time is more than just remembering we sing certain songs. It is about bringing everything to God, to allow him to work from within through his spirit. If we do this, if we respond to his working, we will be compelled to act. We will seek action and we will respond with God's love to his creation. 
We receive so much from God throughout the year. That harvest is a time for us to give back something of what God has blessed us. So please sit back and watch this short clip which highlights some of the things we will be giving back to God this harvest. 